Hello, my strong, strong friends. I am in Niseko, Japan. I snowboarded for like six hours today, right babe? It was good, it was fun. So I feel like that's my, I don't know if I can call it cardio, but I got some work done. But I feel a little bit lazy. Sorry, this camera was outside. If it starts smoking over, I'll try to wipe it down. Hold on one sec. A little bit better. Um, but I'm going to go through a like body weight workout that'll be more, more so exercises. Not that'll get your heart rate up, some of them will, but some that could potentially build some strength. Obviously you're not really, you don't, you don't have much resistance when you're just doing body weight, but we're gonna see. And I put a little workout together and I'll let you know, you'll watch me do it and I'll let you know how I feel. I'm a little nervous because I'm going to be out of breath. <laughs> okay, my first thing is going to be push-ups. I'm going to do three sets of AMRAP push-ups. And the last set will be a burnout. So what I'm going to do is all of my push-ups will be from this chair. Well, it's like a little Japanese, this was in the shower in the onsen. <laughs> but um, I'm going to put my feet up on this to make them a little bit harder. And when I do my burnout set, I'm going to do as many as I can here, and whenever I like can't do any more, I'm going to go down to my legs, uh, like no longer use this, and then I'm going to go to my knees. So I'll burn it out, like a drop set, almost. Okay, let's see how many, how many I think I can do. Four or five. <laughs> How many was More that? More than four. Yeah. 25? You're good. Before this next one, Ryan told me I'm sinking a little bit. So to avoid that, I want to keep my core tight. For me, a good cue to keep my core tight is usually to just keep my butt tight. So instead of being out here, I'm loose. I'm just going to tuck my hips under and squeeze my butt. That usually keeps my core tight and I want to keep this straight. So hopefully I do better. So I didn't get, I didn't get quite 25 that one, but that's normal. I'm starting to get a little bit more fatigued. I'm resting like two and a half minutes in between sets. Um, so it makes sense that I'm only hitting a little bit less. You wanna try and make the goal to hit as close as you can to your last set, but if you don't, just know that that's probably normal. I'm resting about two minutes in between sets, so if you're just looking for a rest time, I would use that as a guide. Okay, last set, hardest set. I hit 23 last time, so I'm gonna try to hit at least 20 for my first portion of burnout set. Okay. Keep my butt tight. Oh, tired. And now on to regular push-ups. Try not to rest too much now. Oh God. So <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> okay. So even though those are just from the knee push-ups, which some people would call super easy, when you do them super fatigued, like I just said, they can be really hard. Next, we're going to do a lower body exercise. This is a movement that you can scale and make it a little bit harder. Um, I'll show you the easier version. It's just a glute bridge and you 
can just extend. Uh, just very pretty simple. And to make it harder, you want to hold, and then you could even do make the rep super slow. Um, to make it a little bit harder, and what I'm going to do is do a single leg version of this. And one of the things we're excited about doing is a lot of unilateral movements, single leg movements that I just really don't usually incorporate. And I definitely don't ever do any hip thrusts or any like real glute work other than squats and deadlifts. So this is exciting. Um, so what you're going to want to do to make it harder is instead of just pushing up with both legs on the floor, you're going to extend one leg. And I have to focus because I'm new at these. So I'm going to take it as slow as possible and try to keep my core tight. I'm going to do just three sets of eight and then switch legs. actually even step it up and make those even harder what you can do is put a hip circle or some kind of band around your knees um, and that might actually help your form a little bit and keep you tighter um, but then what you can do is push out against the knees and activate your glutes even more since my last video a lot of people have been excited about the possibility of me doing CrossFit I don't think I'll go totally I'm not doing the open or anything but I think a lot of the workout styles and movements that I learned in CrossFit will be beneficial to some of the new things that I'm exploring um, and kind of getting back to just like sweating. So handstand push-ups. I had a ton of friends weigh in on movements that I should do and like so many people commented, Johnny Candido, Natalie Hansen, I had um, Jesse Norris, John Hack, they all gave me great ideas. Um, one super strong friend named Graciano, he suggested, and I'll put his info down below, um, he suggested I do some handstand push-ups as did our friend Adam Cosma, who you guys have seen. So when two super strong people tell you to do something, I'm going to do it. And handstand push-ups is something that I've done before back in the CrossFit days. So I'll show you a couple different ways to do a handstand push-up. This is a great body weight movement that'll make it even harder than the push-ups that we did earlier in this video. I've been practicing them for this video so far and I'm not quite where I was before. So I'm scaling a normal handstand push-up already. So if you're really good at them, what you could do is just handstand push-up from the floor and put your head on the floor and try to keep them strict. You're not ever putting the weight in your head Really when your head touches the ground, that's the bottom of your rep. So when if you need to rest in between, in between reps, what you can do is just fully extend. Um, so it's gonna be a difficult movement. So I tried to do one pillow, I can't, so I'm stacking two pillows so that all I have to do is the bottom of my rep will be when my head touches and when I feel my head touching, I'll extend. And actually the hardest variation would be if you did a deficit. So some people will use parallettes um, so that they are extending. The range of motion is even bigger than this. So maybe one day I'll get down to touching the ground with my head and then maybe even using parallettes. When I did CrossFit, I could not do those. So that's a super advanced movement. Um, so two pillows, we're gonna do it. I wanna see, I'd love to do five or more reps here. So this is my first set. We're gonna see, take it as, as it is. Be very careful, especially when you're in a small Japanese hotel. And your feet are inches from a paper wall. Yeah, I do not want to hit this guy. Ten. That was pretty 
good. Are you impressed? Yeah, it was two and a half inch range of motion. <laughs> eager, eager. Uh, so maybe I'll try with just one pillow next. But you can scale these in many ways. Um, maybe a handstand push-up seems a little crazy for you. If it seems too crazy, maybe you could just kick up to the wall and just holding will build up some strength and confidence with getting upside down. Um, but there are a couple different ways you can scale and get closer to the ground. One is just using a chair. This will be the next tear down variation. So what you can do is pull a chair and you wanna kinda of pike up so that my upper body is still pretty vertical and then I can practice my handstand push-up. Now, if you can't do that, what you can do is put your knees on the chair and then there's less weight in your hands and then you can just practice. And I say practice, but you're practicing to eventually get a real handstand push-up. Um, but you can use those for working sets and try to do as many as you can and you know do a three by five or a three by eight and work it into your program somehow. It's fun to get upside down. That's why I'm super happy that we're experimenting with new things. Walking on your hands and getting on your hands is just really fun and that's one of the things I miss about CrossFit. No, I'm not gonna be a CrossFitter, sorry. Okay, we're gonna try one pillow. max currently maybe we do our working sets with two pillows but know that those are coming okay and that's gonna be it I think as far as explaining new movements obviously I'm doing more than just those three but if you guys like stuff like this and you want to see more kind of hotel room workouts let me know like this video if you want to see another one like this and I'll make it for you um, I know this is a strength channel so a lot of people are just like used to seeing me lifting a lot of weight or maybe sometimes not a lot of weight but just lifting weight um, so body weight movements are something new that I'm trying I think they will be good for my strength progression but right now I need to do something you know I can't just snowboard for six hours and not move my muscles I do have a little bit of a pump right now so I'm not mad about that if you liked this and are interested in seeing more hotel room workouts or want to have a guided program for you um i put together a totally free workout plan and has a couple different workouts and kind of like how in this video it'll help if you need to scale one way or the other it'll be not customized but there'll be something for you regardless of your training level so if you want to see that click the link below and you can download it i recommend signing up for the bff list then you can get first time access to stuff like this so if you miss seeing a video that had a cool download Usually the BFF list will get first dibs to that and also just have more access to me and more access to my brain and then typing fingers and then yeah. Okay, let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoy it. See you next one. Bye.